In this exercise, we're going to compute some materials along our alignment from our sample line group. You can see that material lists are a part of your sample line group collection. These are calculated from the Analyze tab of the ribbon using the Compute Materials command under Volumes and Materials. I'm going to change my quantity takeoff criteria default to Earthworks which is going to let me pick an existing ground surface and a datum. Once I select those, I can pick my volume calculation method. It defaults to the average end area method, but we can also use prismoidal and composite volumes. I'm going to change these to prismoidal and select OK. And underneath our materials list in tool space, you will see that we now have some populated material. We have materials list one, and it has earthworks under it. And I can add a material here, but I need to compute it from the command. So I'm going to go back into that, and you can see our existing materials list with the material that I just added. And I'm going to change the quantity type of that material to structures. When I do that, that allows me to add a corridor shape to my material. So I'm going to calculate materials for uh, our curb structure. So I'm going to name it curb, change the data type to a corridor shape, and then select my rural road curb shape. Now I'm going to add another material. I'll do the same thing for my sidewalk. I'll name it sidewalk, add my corridor shape after I change the quantity type to structures, and then pick that shape and click the plus sign to add it. Now I'm going to import another criteria. I'm going to import a materials list. And I know this can get a little confusing with the naming here, but uh, this allows us to build a materials list from our corridor. So you select the pavement material, which I'm going to select pave one, and you select your base and then your sub base. So I'm going to select rural road base for my base. I don't have a sub base. It's going to let me know that not all of the named objects were included, so it's not going to calculate those, and that's fine. So now we have our two materials lists that we can use for generating quantities. And I'm going to make sure that's set to Prismortal and select OK now. Now that our materials are computed, I'm going to add in a materials volume table. This dialog is fairly simple. You pick your alignment and your sample line group, then your materials list, and then pick your material. I'm going to add a curb material and I'm not going to split my table. And we'll see what a split table looks like in just a second. But you'll see that we now have a table that was inserted for our material. Uh, this is going to be a fairly redundant table because my area and volume is the exact same for every uh, corridor station in the section that I have. So nothing's really going to change there. Now I'm going to create a total volumes table. And this is going to pull from my earthwork. So we're going to use materials list one. I'll go ahead and split this table. We'll take a look at what that looks like. And you'll see that we now have a cut fill area and a cut and fill volume, as well as a cumulative cut and fill for each section view.
The last thing I'm going to do for my volumes is I'm going to create a volume report. And this is as simple as selecting again your alignment, uh, your sample line group. I'm going to create an Earthworks volume report and this uses an XSL style sheet. Once I select OK, it is going to open that up in your internet browser. You can see that this opens up in Microsoft Edge. And you can select it, copy it, paste it into a Word document, 